turns out that in the symmetric group, there's a very lovely way to determine when two elements are conjugate, and so to study things like conjugacy classes. So there's a theorem about this, and it says that sigma and tau be permutations in Sn, in this symmetric group on n elements, and then they are conjugate if and only if they have the same cycle type. And the key thing here is that if I have two permutations written as products of disjoint cycles, then it's really very easy to see whether they do indeed have the same cycle type. And that tells me whether they're conjugate, where I've shown directly that they're conjugate might be quite fiddly. And also the conjugacy classes are determined precisely by cycle types, so it's not too hard to write down the possible cycle types in a particular symmetric group Sn, and then that tells us the conjugacy classes. So let's think about how to prove this. So we want to prove two directions, so let's do the left to right direction first. So here we're assuming that sigma and tau are conjugate, and we want to show that they have the same cycle type. So what does it mean to say they're conjugate? It means there is some row, say, in Sn, such that sigma is equal to rho inverse tau rho. So conjugating tau by rho, I get sigma. Now, how are we going to think about cycle types? So we know that tau can be written uniquely as a product of disjoint cycles, uniquely up to writing cycles in a different order and up to cycling within each cycle. So let's say tau is the product pi1, pi r as the product of disjoint cycles. And the good thing is that if we have an individual cycle, then conjugating is something we understand. So for each i here, uh, rho inverse pi i rho, so conjugating that individual cycle, this is a cycle of the same length as pi i. And that's because if we write out this permutation pi i, this cycle is a1 up to ak as the elements being cycled, we can write down very directly what we get when we conjugate and we discover it's a cycle of the same length. And now it's nice to put these together. So we discover that sigma is, well, we know it's rho inverse tau rho, and then we can think of that as we sort of repeatedly insert rho times rho inverse. We get rho inverse pi 1 rho, rho inverse pi 2 rho, and so on, all the way up to rho inverse pi r rho. And the crucial thing is that each of these is a cycle of the same length as the corresponding pi i, so sigma has the same cycle type as tau. What about the other direction? So this time we assume that sigma and tau have the same cycle type. And somehow we have to show that they're conjugate, which means kind of coming up with a suitable row to conjugate by, if you like. And that feels quite hard, but actually it's not too bad, again, if we focus on one cycle at a time. So let's write out what these permutations are. So let's say sigma is the cycle a1 to ak1, and then some other cycle, ak1 plus 1 to ak2, and so on, and ak n minus 1 plus 1, let's say, up to a k m, and tau, well something similar, we'll just make the a's into b's, because crucially we know it has the same cycle type, so it has the same number of cycles and they have the same length, so these suffices are all the same. So now we need to think of some way to get from one of these to the other via conjugation, but we can just do that very directly. So if we define rho via, well, what does it do to ai? It sends it to di for all of these i's. 
and then any other elements it just fixes. So then what happens if we conjugate this first cycle with the a's up to k1, for example, by rho? Well, that is precisely just the cycle with the b's, and so on. So this is the same idea that we had in the previous uh, direction, that if we conjugate a cycle of some length, we get a cycle of the same length. But we can check this relationship, because if we pick, for example, b1, that's a1 rho. So over here, we apply rho inverse to get a1. That sends it to a2. And then we apply rho, which sends it to a2 rho, which is just b2. And we can check for each element in this cycle and for each element not in the cycle that these two permutations do the same thing. So then tau is just rho inverse sigma rho. So sigma and tau are conjugate. So it's not too bad if we remember this key idea that conjugating cycles is a very nice thing to do. Conjugation in general feels a bit scary, but conjugating cycles is good, and then conjugating products of disjoint cycles works out nicely as well. So in SM, the conjugacy classes are determined precisely by cycle type. In the alternating group AN, that's not quite the case. So if two permutations are conjugate in AN, then they're also conjugate in SN, and so they have the same cycle type by this argument. The converse doesn't work out, which means that thinking about the conjugacy classes in the alternating group is just a little bit more intricate. Um, but it works out very cleanly in the symmetric group.